you lost your cool in an interview with BBC's uh, Andrew Neil, and you were really honest about it after, which was re kind of refreshing and enjoyable. Um, as the internet said, they've never seen anyone lose an interview. <laughs> uh, so to me, honestly, it was like seeing like Floyd Mayweather Jr. or somebody like knocked down. Um, what, what was it? Can you take me to that experience? Here's that day. That day is I have a book release, didn't get a lot of sleep the night before. And this is the last interview of the day. And it's an interview with BBC. I don't know anything about BBC. I don't watch BBC. I don't know any of the hosts. So we get on the interview and it's supposed to be about the book. And the host, Andrew Neil, doesn't ask virtually a single question about the book. He just starts reading me bad old tweets, which <laughs> which I hate. I mean, it's it's annoying and it's stupid and it's the worst form of interview yeah. when somebody just reads you bad old tweets, especially when I've acknowledged bad old tweets before. And so I'm going through the list with him. And this interview was solidly 20 minutes. I mean, it was it was a long interview. And we get to, and, and I make a couple of particularly annoyed mistakes in the interview. So annoyed mistake number one is the ego play, right? So there, there's a point in the middle of the interview where I say, like, I don't even know who you are, which was true. I didn't know who he was. It turns out he's a very famous person in, yeah. in Britain. And so you can't make that ego play. It's but even if he's not famous, that's not- It doesn't, right, it's a dumb thing to do. And it's an ass thing to do. So like the, so saying that was was, you know, more just kind of peak and silliness. Uh, and uh, so that was that was mistake. I enjoyed one. watching that. It was like, oh, Ben is human. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Glad somebody enjoyed it. Uh, so that, there, was, there was that. And then the, uh, the other mistake was that I just don't watch enough British TV. So the way that interviews are done there are much more adversarial than American TV. In, in American TV, if somebody is adversarial with you, you assume that they're a member of the other side. That's typically how it is. Uh, and so I'm critiquing some of his questions at the beginning. And I thought that the critique of some of his questions is actually fair. He was asking me about abortion. And I thought he was asking it from uh, a way of framing the question that wasn't accurate. And so I assumed that he was on the left, because again, I'd never heard of him. Uh, and so you know, I mischaracterized him. And I apologize later for mischaracterizing him. We finally go through the interview. It's 20 minutes. He just keeps going with the battle tweets. And finally, I got up and I took off the microphone. I walked out. And immediately, I knew it was a mistake. Like within 30 seconds of the end of the interview, I knew it was a mistake. Uh, and uh, and that's why even before the interview came out, I, I believe I corrected the record that Andrew Neil is not on the left. That's a mistake by me. Um, and uh, and then, you know, took the hit for, for a bad interview. Uh, and so as far as you know, what I wish I had done differently. I, I wish I had known who he was. I wish I had done my research. I wish that I, I wish that I had treated it as though there was a possibility that it was going to be more adversarial than it was. Mm -hmm. I think I was incautious about the interview because it was pitched as it's just another book interview. And it wasn't just another book interview. It was treated much more adversarially than that. Um, so I wish that that's on me. I got to research the people who, who are talking to me and, and watch their shows and, and learn about that. Uh, and then obviously, you know, the kind of gut level appeal to ego or arrogance like that, that's a bad look and, and shouldn't have done that. And losing your cool is always a bad look.